truck is very angry at me. This trip wasn't supposed to end up in the little town of Kamas. Originally, our long weekend adventure was planned for the Stanley area in Idaho. But wildfires and poor air quality forced us to change our plans less than 24 hours before our departure. We met up with Richard at a gas station to quickly discuss our game plan, plan routes, and scout potential campsites. Normally, planning a trip like this involves weeks of research but with time running short, we had to come up with a strategy on the fly. We figured out our plans for the next couple of days and made our way over to the trailhead. As we continued our way up the mountain, the darker it became. We were also slowed down quite a bit from a herd of cows not letting us pass. Come on, big girl. Since this trip was planned last minute, campsites were a gamble at this point. We were eventually able to find this one that we called home for the night. The next morning, we woke up and prepared breakfast. Our Isaco APL 55 is keeping everything perfectly cool for these overlanding trips. This fridge is built to last as it's made from stainless steel and has a five year warranty on the compressor. This fridge is perfect for our longer trips with 58 quarts of capacity and the option to make it a freezer and a fridge or just have it a fridge, which is the current configuration we have it for this specific trip. It's super quiet, has a soft closed lid, and has some very satisfying latches. Another great feature this fridge has is it has an app for your phone. So even when we're driving down trails, I'm able to change the temperature if need be. Make sure to go check out the Isaco APL 55 in the link below and use code OUTLANDISH to save yourself 12% off any purchase. After our breakfast, we headed out to enjoy a day of exploring trails and seeing the views we were unable to see last night. Well, we have arrived officially at camp. Uh, I was not expecting it to be this packed. Remind myself in the future to never go camping on another holiday weekend again, as this weekend is Labor Day weekend. And it is the most packed I've ever seen the forest in my entire life. Uh, but we were able to go down the beaten path and end up finding this camp spot, which is actually a pretty decent one considering how busy it is.
Well, so I hit a, uh, a kind of a stump that came out of nowhere, and uh, now my truck is very angry at me, and I have no uh, no power assist. I tried turning it on and off already, and uh, it's still doing this. So I'm gonna try disconnecting the battery and then connecting it back, and hopefully that fixes that because no power steering sucks. Alrighty, so the disconnecting the negative on the battery worked. Uh, the code is now gone. I have my power, full power steering again. So if that ever happens to you on a trail, just disconnect the negative on your battery for about 20 seconds, put it back in, and everything is good to go. Well, we came across this little down tree here, and obviously there's not enough room for our regs to pass. So we're gonna have to cut it. And that's why I always carry a chainsaw with me, especially in these wooded areas, because you never know when the last time uh, somebody went down these trails. We continued on the trails in the area, but were very underwhelmed with them. All the trails were extremely overgrown with no views and no interesting obstacles, so we decided to move on to another area we had planned out. Unfortunately, this is the nature of the beast, and uh, we're supposed to be going down that trail right now uh, on our route planning, and uh, the road is closed because the bridge is out, apparently. So. This was the only trail to get to the next section of trails we had planned. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to take a pretty big detour and air up and go all the way around on the highway to get to the other side of the trails that we had planned. Well, we have made a quick little pit stop for lunch and mind you, this has probably been the highlight of the trip so far. This spot is absolutely gorgeous and glad we waited to uh, pit stop for lunch so we can take in the views.
We hit the road again to make it to camp, but ran into some complications along the way. Well, we just pulled over here on the side of the road because uh, while we were driving, Richard's truck uh, threw some error code on the dash and uh, we're doing a little research to figure out uh, how to fix it. All right, so I'm having a exhaust fluid quality issue and on my truck pre-2018 that either means it's a knock sensor that's gone bad or that it needs a service bay test to run. Luckily, he has an OBD device that I can download an app and then run a service bay test. If that works, good. If that doesn't work, that means I need a knock sensor. However, my gauge is reading that the knock sensor is not only working fine, it's reading correctly. I did just replace the upstream knock sensor and did not run a service bay test. I was told sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So hopefully I can plug this in, get the right app, run the test, and we'll go from there. I think I'll do some easier stuff first. I'll do like a visual inspection, I'll turn off the engine, I'll pull the battery, but uh, this is why modern diesels need to go down the toilet. Um, why there are more effective and efficient ways to reduce emissions that don't mean DPF, EGR, and spraying cat piss into the exhaust. Rant over. <laughs> Thanks the EPA. <laughs> Thanks EPA. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, after quite a bit of time troubleshooting and trying different things, we were unable to clear that code on Richard's truck. We're thinking it's a bad knock sensor. Um, and uh, it is Sunday, and it is 622, and we're in some very small town, and there is nothing open. And tomorrow is Labor Day, uh, which will probably also be a lot of things closed. So right now the game plan is to go to camp, find camp somewhere, uh, which obviously we were planning to be at camp. Oh, wait, no, wait, it just went away. Oh. Are you serious? I am 100% not joking right now. It went away. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, as you just heard the good news from Richard, just driving five, ten miles down the road, and the uh, error has cleared itself. There is no more error, and uh, he says everything is showing good and fine. So we're just gonna keep monitoring it, obviously. Hopefully everything goes well and we can continue on with this trip and not have to separate, but uh, you know, so far so good. Well, we found a camp spot for tonight. Not the choice we had in mind, but obviously with all the delays we ran into today, we uh, arriving at camp much, much later than anticipated and ended up just stumbling upon this spot. And you'll see in a moment, this spot is no measly spot. And if you could hear that, that is a raging river that's about 150 feet down this little cliff ledge here. That's going to be awesome when going to bed. But I mean, the views, they're fantastic.